Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, good morning and welcome again to our time together this morning. Again, I think there's quite a few people away. So, yeah, let's just, it doesn't matter how many of us there are, we're here in God's presence and we're going to worship him this morning. But first of all, let's just take a moment to reflect on this past week. It's been a momentous week, hasn't it? for different reasons, but obviously for the biggest reason in the passing of, of Queen Elizabeth. So I thought we'd start, it'd be good just to start with some prayer for a thanksgiving for her life and for her family and, and for our new king. And also I thought it'd be good to pray for our new prime minister as well because we're going through really difficult times and there's so many challenges ahead. So let's just start with some prayer. After I've prayed, we'll, we'll have just a moment of quiet and then if anybody else wants to pray out loud, please do. Lord God, we really want to thank you for the life of Queen Elizabeth and for the just really great blessing that her long and steadfast reign has been to our country through her wholehearted dedication of purpose and her selfless service and her great wisdom and compassion and love for her people. Lord, we've been so blessed by her faithfulness, and we thank you for that, but also by your faithfulness to her and to us in providing that reign for 70 years. And we thank you too, Lord, for her faithful witness to Jesus throughout that time. And for your strength for her to carry out her duties. And thank you that now you've taken her home to rejoice in her reward with you. So we just praise you for her. And Lord, we want to lift her family to you. We thank you that you are a God of all comfort. And as they grieve and as they face so many new challenges, we lift them to your mercy and your goodness. We pray for your peace. And pray, Lord, that they might, each of them, come to have that faith in you that she knew and that inspired so many. So we just pray for them. And Lord, we pray for your blessing on our new king. Lord, we pray that his reign will also be one of dedication, of faithful service, of wisdom and righteousness. And we pray, Lord, that he too might know a real and steady faith in Jesus as his mother did. Lord, we pray that you would bring your blessings in abundance. And we also want to pray for our government and for our new prime minister, Lord. They've got so many challenges to face in the difficulties of the days ahead. So we ask for wisdom, mixed with compassion and humility and integrity and all that they will need, Lord, to face the decisions they've got to make. We pray for right and good decisions, Lord, that will be a help to so many people who are going to be struggling as the days go on. So we lift our nation to you, in Jesus' name. And we just remember again, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and thank you for her life. If anybody else wants to just have their prayers allowed for us to share in, please do.
city of Iraq to elect God with the Christian faith, God as the Queen has led this country over the last 70 years. Lord, we do pray that you will uh, have your hand upon King Charles from day to day. And like Chris has said, the challenges that will be for him and the government of our country. So Lord, we, we, we come before you, Lord, on behalf of our country this morning and say, Lord, that may your name continue to be glorified in this country. And though, Lord, not everything that we see is glorifying to you, but Lord, we do pray this morning, Lord, that, that, that the, the cover, Lord, that we've enjoyed over this last period will continue. Lord, I pray for your hand of blessing on this country. Pray for our government, Lord, that they will, as Chris said, in the decisions that face them in the days ahead, the challenges, and the challenges that we are facing too. Lord, that we, we stand before you this morning, who is our Lord and Saviour. Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that we'll continue, Lord, to keep our eyes fixed upon you. Lord, I pray for the church of our country. Lord, that it will continue, Lord, to, to demonstrate your love and to bring the message of hope and faith that is found in you. Mm. And Lord, we know that not everybody embraces that, but Lord, the, the, the message is there that we proclaim that you are Lord, that you are our Saviour, that you offer hope. Lord, that you, you give us the things that we need in our lives and the leadership. Lord, and, and I just pray that that will continue. Lord, I pray that the church will, Lord, will go from strength to strength in its message. And Lord, that as your word says, that you will pour out your spirit. Lord, we need your spirit to be poured out upon us. Let the Spirit be poured out upon the church in our country so that, Lord, we can see your hand at work, that we can see people coming into your kingdom. Mm. Lord, that we can see people saved from their sins and have the knowledge that when they leave this world, they will see you in all your glory. Lord, I pray that the message, Lord, is powerful. Lord, we'll proclaim it with power. And to do that, we need your Spirit upon us. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that over this country, Lord, I pray, that there will be an outpouring of your spirit. Lord, in these changing times, in these challenging times, Lord, I do pray, Lord, that we will see the hand of you start to move in greater ways as people turn to you to find what they're looking for because you are the answer. You bring the answers. And although there may be things going on around us, Lord, you're the one who can bring peace into hearts and hope into hearts and assurance. And Lord, I pray that this message will ring loud and clear in our country in the days ahead. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So Lord, we just ask for your goodness and mercy to continue to flow out to us and to this nation, that we will be shining lights for you. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. So I've been thinking about dedication to purpose this week, and it, because it's reminded me, as I've thought back about the Queen's commitment for 70 years, of Paul's words when he wrote about his desire and purpose to know Jesus and to make him known. And it's just this one sentence in particular that stood out to me. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And I think he goes on to say, let those of you who are mature be of the same mind, have that same purpose. Because that's our purpose, isn't it? To know Jesus and to make him known. And it's a challenge to be that focused with all the demands and the distractions and the difficulties that people are facing right now. Uh, it's so easy to lose our focus. And Paul knew what he was talking about because he was suffering persecution when he wrote this. He wasn't having an easy life. We're in difficult times, but they're an opportunity for us to learn to trust God more and to show Jesus more by our faith and trust and, and steadiness. 
So while we pray for our king and our government, we need to rely on the faithfulness of God and on the power of his spirit and, and the hope we have in Jesus to encourage us to persevere and to be the people that he wants us to be. So I just want to read a psalm to lead us into worship, to help us to just focus on that need to trust in Jesus and trust in God's power. Psalm 33. Let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Make music for him on the ten-stringed harp. Sing a new song of praise to him. Play skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. Let the whole world fear the Lord and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts their schemes, but the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his, in, as his inheritance. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne he observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts so he understands everything they do. The best equipped army cannot save a king, nor is great strength enough to save a warrior. Don't count on your war horses to give you victory. For all their strength, they cannot save you. But the Lord watches <coughs> over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, O Lord, for our hope is in you alone. So, you know, when things are overwhelming and when we're getting alongside other people who are overwhelmed by their issues as well, let's choose trust over anxiety like we were hearing about last week choosing to trust and choosing to taste the goodness of God. And let's choose praise over that sort of tendency to be despondent and despairing. And choose hope, so that we can share hope with others. And then we can shine, as Paul also wrote, about us being stars shining in the darkness in this difficult generation that needs so much hope and is without it apart from Jesus. So let's praise him now. My God. 
God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. My enemies scatter, cause they know the battle is done. My God is stronger, the victory is already Yes, he died for my ransom, rose up on the third day. Oh, cause my God is greater than death, hell and the grave. Oh, I won't be shaken, and I won't be moved. There is nothing for God that's impossible. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have. He doesn't already know. There's no problem too big. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. And I won't be shaken.
The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice Be 
wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide he trembles at his voice he trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great Thank you. 
take me home. Yes. What joy shall fill my heart? Then shall I bow in humble adoration and there prove and proclaim it. Remind us today that we are to find our hope and our confidence in Him. And when things around seem very challenging and uncertain and lots of changes taking place, I believe the Lord would remind us today that He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the promises that He has made, He stands upon. Those promises that you have in your heart are true and amen. And God will see them through in your life and in your experience and in, in everything that, that you face. His, 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 his promises will be the same. The challenges may change. They may increase. But his promises remain the same. He says, I change not. And the things that I have promised you stand and remain forever until you see me in all his glory and splendor in heaven. And so we can keep our eyes fixed upon him today. And the Lord would say, keep your eyes fixed on him. And, and Jesus said this, he said that you, you, you don't need to worry and it's the hardest thing to not worry and to be concerned. But Jesus said that you should cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. And not to worry about the things by, by how, how much can you add to your life by worrying, not a thing. But if your faith remains strong in him and he changes not and he's the powerful one, he's the all-knowing one. And he is the one who is with you every day, every step of the way. And so don't look around like Peter when he got out of the boat and he was and he was had the faith to step out of the boat. But when he looked at the waves and the things that were going on, he started to be overwhelmed by the things that he saw. But Jesus said, just, just reach out. And he called to Jesus and he reached out and he saved him and they got back in the boat together. And so today, if, if you see things that are, seem to be raging around you, or there seems to be uncertainty, don't look at those things around you. Fix your eyes on Jesus, because he's the one. He's the one who overrules these things. He's the one who is faithful. He's the one who sustains you. So if you're feeling like you're worried about things, then today Jesus would say to you, cast your worries upon him, for he cares for you. He reminds you today that he loves you that he cares for you, that his hand is upon you, that he'll lead you through. He'll never leave you nor forsake you, that he'll provide that you want, the things that you need. He even knows the things that you need. And when you pray, remember this, that he has already answered your prayer. He knew what you needed before you prayed. And so this morning, just take that, that, that in your heart this morning, that assurance that Jesus is with you and he is with you every day, every step of the way and he will never, ever let you go. Amen.
Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Um, anybody doing Sunday school today? They're all upstairs today. <laughs> Have fun. Right. Bob. Just pray for you. Lord, thank you mm. for Bob and Joy, and, and just thank you for the good week they've had away, and pray that they've come back refreshed. Mm. We're ready to serve you here again. We ask that you bless Bob as he shares your mm. word of encouragement to us this morning. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Chris. That singing was reasonable, wasn't it? Did you, did you feel and sense it lift your heart and your spirit and think, this is what I needed? It's what I needed. It's what I needed to be part of. You know, when we sing and praise the Holy Spirit presence of God fills this place. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise him. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'd like us to, uh, you know, it's been a momentous week, as Chris has said. But, uh, and, and there's lots of things that I want to say, but I'd just like to say right at the start that we also remember Graham and Angela and their family this week, who, whose daughter, Graham's daughter, Laura, passed away last week and was um, their funeral was this week. And so we just continue to pray and support their whole family through these times and uh, in, in the days ahead, you know, when there'll be a lot of sadness and grief. So keep Graham and Angela and, and uh, Laura and her mum and their side of the family, keep them in your prayers. Um, I'm sure that, that you'll agree it's, it's uh, appropriate for, for us as a church to remember the, the Queen, who and, and Chris has already been doing that this morning, to remember the, the Queen and pay tribute to her and... Uh, and the life that she lived, 96 years old, that was a good age to achieve. I just checked that she was born on the 21st of April, 1926. Uh, I, if I'm looking around now, I don't think anybody here today was around on that day. Uh, my dad, had he been around, he was born a year later. In, oh, no, he was born a year before, 925, my dad. And, you know, she... She uh, had just celebrated 70 years as the, as the queen and monarch of our country. And uh, a great thing was sent out on our church WhatsApp group this week. And it just showed uh, pictures of the, of the queen. And I've asked uh, Neil if he would just show that for us. It wasn't quite that, are they? Just, just watch this. It's amazing. Amazing. Don't know if people are old enough to remember, but she didn't have look like a mum on that last picture. Queen Mother. Hmm? No. 
and I'm sure that you'll have been watching and I and, uh, don't know whether anybody here hasn't seen that last picture of her shaking hands with Liz Truss and the, that radiant smile that she seemed to just be able to show to people. Now, it's, it's strange, isn't it, that, we've, it, it's, that we're going to say king. This is King Charles III, isn't it? And it's quite, it's quite uh, I don't know, it's, it's quite hard to get your thinking around that. But I, wanna, I want to say a few things this morning about what she said in her life. But I'd like to say something about what Charles said in his speech to us that nine minute speech that he made and the, the part that I'd pick out of that he said so I, I thought it was a, a really good speech and a moving speech and bearing in mind that he'd just lost his, his mum you know a few days before that but I'd just like to pick out a little thing that he said which I feel is very very important and before I read it I ponder and think about so many things, you know, about, about how the Bible relates to, to the world in which we live in today. And, and I kind of come to a conclusion, is that leaders play a more important role than sometimes we think or we understand. And if you look back through the Old Testament, I'm not sure this is a similar parallel to draw, I'm not sure. But I read in that how when leaders followed God in their lives, he had an impact in their nation. And when leaders didn't follow God in their lives, then it also had an impact in their nation. And I'm, I'm, I'm not qualified enough to, to know about so many of these things. But we have enjoyed a leadership of a person who has professed a faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And and so the thing I'd like to pick out about what Charles said, and, and I want us as a church to pray that this goes forward in the truth and the power in which he said it. Because he said, the role and the duties of monarchy also remain, as does the sovereign's particular relationship and responsibilities towards the Church of England. And just at that point there, you know, we are not the Church of England. <coughs> <coughs> But <clears throat> I was talking with people this week who, who, uh, who, uh, who have different faiths. And, and I always explain it. I said, you know, they said, what, part ch what church are you? And I said, well, we're, we're Assemblies of God, Pentecostal. I said, but to help you understand that, I said, the faith that we share is exactly the same as the, as the Church of England. I said, it's just that, is this going on? We're less formal, that's all. But our faith is the same. We believe in the same God. And I've had the pleasure and privilege to meet so many people within the Church of England who have shared the joy and the, and, and the excitement of knowing the Lord as their personal saviour and, and just been absolutely blessed and, and amazed to be part of just that sometimes it'll be more formal. But I also take, you know, what he says about the responsibility to the Church of England. And he says, the church in which my own faith is so deeply rooted. In that faith and the values it inspires, I have been brought up to cherish a sense of duty to others and to uphold in the greatest respect the precious traditions, freedoms and responsibilities of our unique history and our system of parliamentary government. Now, I don't claim to understand how it works. I know that the kings or the queens used to be like the, 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 the power that controlled and then it shifted to to the, the parliamentary side of, of governance of our country, but also it still remains with, with the monarch to, to give that to the, to the, like when Liz Truss went this week to shake hands and, and, the, and, and she, the Queen, asked Liz Truss to form a government to lead our country. And I, I, am, of the, I am of the understanding that it is important to have a leadership of a country that has this kind of faith that which can, we then can enjoy the freedom and it says here, the freedom that we enjoy. And so he said, as the queen herself did with such unswerving devotion, I too now solemnly pledge myself throughout the remaining time God grants me to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. And 
Again, I don't claim to understand all of it, but I think that's an important thing for him to say. And I'm going to pray, and I believe that the church across this country, led, led by so many church, different church leaders, will also pray that that continues, that that faith continues, and that that unswerving uh, stand upon what, what the Bible teaches will be there. Because I just want to share a few things that might surprise you, although I might not surprise you, is, is some of the things that the Queen has said. And, and, it's, and it is absolutely awe-inspiring to, 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 to find out some of these things. I've, I've, I've turned two pages over, so let me just check. So here are some of the quotes and messages that the Queen has actually said. I've got some dates for them, but I wasn't able to find all the dates. But the Queen said... Throughout my life, the message and teachings of Christ have been my guide. And in them, I find hope. It is my heartfelt prayer that you will continue to be sustained by your faith in times of trial and encouraged by hope in times of despair. When you read that, it just kind of sends something down my back because that was the, the queen of our country who said that. The teachings of Christ have been my guide and I find hope in them. In 2014, she said, for me, the life of Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life. You know, these are the things that, that you could preach on all of these, you could, you, could, you, could, you could build a word around all of these, these, these things that she said. Here's another one that she said. And this is so true. None of us can slow the passage of time. And whilst we often focus on all things that have changed in the intervening years, which remains... Uh, sorry, I will say... And while we often focus on all that has changed in the intervening years, much remains unchanged including the gospel of Christ and its teachings and his teachings. That's what she said. On another occasion, she said this. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try, try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings and to put my trust in God. You know, this is something that relates to, to me because it, that's, that's, that's how I, I, I want to live that way as well. You know, that I try to live my life, I try to do what is right. And the whole teachings of the Bible are based on helping me to live the life that is right and to put my trust in God. Something else that she said in 2011, although we are capable of great acts of kindness, History teaches that sometimes we need saving from ourselves, from our recklessness or our greed. God sent into the world a unique person. He was neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. Praise the Lord. That's so true, isn't it? That's our experience today, that we have found that we have a saviour. I, I don't know, I, I, I must take the time to give thanks to God for his forgiveness for me because if I remain in sin and unforgiven, that bars me. That bars me from knowing the God who loves me and could keep me out of heaven. To, in the year 2000, she said, to many of us, our beliefs are of fundamental, are of, of fundamental importance. For me, the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I try to live my life. So the queen of our country said that she has a personal accountability before God. Do we know when she said that? Yeah, this was in 2011. I'm not quite sure, but a lot of them will have been taken from her Christmas message, I think. But, the, but I'm not sure where that one was from, but it is in 2011. Yeah, 
Well, th these, are, these are great quotes that she's said. Yeah, a lot of them will, been, will have been to in, the, in the Christmas address. No, it's okay, fine. I've got, I have got a couple of, uh, I'm going to refer to something that she said, probably one of the last things that she said. But in 1981, she said this, Christ not only revealed to us the truth in his teachings, he lived by what he believed and gave us the strength to, do, to try to do the same. And finally on the cross, he showed the supreme example of physical and moral courage. She said that in 1981. 2016, she said the, 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 she said, Jesus Christ, the king that she serves. Ruth put something on great this, this week, didn't she, in, in the prayers, and she said that the, 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 the queen has, has died and that she's now with the king. And that was great. In 2020, at an Easter address, this is what she said in the middle of the coronavirus situation. And it was Easter. She said, the discovery of the risen Christ on the first Easter day gave his followers new hope and fresh purpose. And we can all take heart from this. We know that coronavirus will not overcome us. That's what she said in 2020. Do you want to pause the uh, stream a sec, Neil? Right, I've asked...
Yeah. They were also surprised when she allowed James Bond to do his bit in 2012. Yeah. You know, I read something else as well. This may be one of the last things that she said, but she wrote to the Anglican Conference, uh, the Lambeth Conference in London in um, just early this year. And in the letter that she wrote, she said that Christ had served as a guide in her life. And uh, she expressed great pleasure that the Lambeth Conference could take place after a delay of two years in the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, bishops from over 165 countries are attending the conference, which runs uh, in, in July and August of this year. And although, you know, we, we're part of Assemblies of God, I do recognise the Church of England around the world and, and the message that it's taken to different corners of the world. And we've had the privilege of working with those people, being part of what they were doing in different places around the world. And so we can sort of, uh, you know, we're familiar with that. And so she wrote this and she said, <clears throat> as we emerge from the pandemic, I know that the conference is taking place at a time of great need for the love of God, both in word and deed. And the bishops of the Anglican Communion will set out a path for an ongoing commitment towards Christian unity in a changing world. And a task that is perhaps even more important today, as together you look to the future and explore the role of the church in responding to the needs of the present age. She had some other things and she said, it is a comfort to me that you do so in the strength of God. Toward the end of her message to the Lambeth Conference, she said this, that the message and teaching of Christ have been my guide throughout life. And in him I find hope, she stressed. It is my heartfelt prayer that you will continue to be sustained by your faith in times of trial and encouraged by hope at times of despair. <clears throat> and we do live in a changing world. That's no, there's no doubt about that. And there are challenges facing the church. There are no doubt about that. And in the times that we live, they, they are uncertain. And there's no doubt about that, uncertainty. But you cannot help but miss, but miss what she says, that you will be sustained by your faith in times of of trial, and I would like to take that, you know, as part of, of who we are of, in our church here, that we are sustained by our faith, that we are sustained by our faith in, t in the days in which we live, you know, and, I, and I, I really believe, and as I prayed before, you know, I'm praying and I'm believing, you know, that God will pour out his spirit, the power of his Holy Spirit upon us, his church, and across this country that will spread around the world. That will bring people to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. I think without me saying that there are lots of pressures on churches around to, to, to do this and to do that and to, and to uh, go in this direction and to compromise. But it is my heartfelt prayer, along with what she said, is that we will continue to be sustained by our faith in these difficult days. But you know, we are, the, God's got an amazing way to turn difficult days into days where people turn to him. Where people find that the only answer is through faith in Jesus. When, when, when the challenges come, you know, that we don't despair and sink, but we find that strength in God because it's only him. You know, there's no other name where, wherein we can find the hope and the peace and the forgiveness other than the name of Jesus. He's the one. He's the one who is the answer. And I just want to give tribute today, you know, for the, for the, for the faith that we have had as an example throughout the whole of my lifetime. And throughout many, and just to, to, to conclude here, through her many roles and responsibilities, she always maintained her faith and testimony 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it can't have been easy to do that. There must have been pressures to compromise and to do this and to do that. But she said that she trusted she had an anchor. I'd like to finish by reading this in 1 Peter. <clears throat> and I believe that not only for, for royalty, but this is for everybody. This is for everybody who stand before God. And it says, one of our favourite passages this, by the way. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by, the, by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. And these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence, knowledge, and knowledge, self-control, and self-control with patience, endurance, and with patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. I tell you what, a different place we'd live in if those things were in operation in greater power and strength. And he says, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are, are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you'll never fall away. And then this is the crowning glory of all of that. And it says, then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray. Thank you, Lord, that this is our hope there that we've read about. This is truth. It's solid. It's a foundation. It's a foundation that we have in our lives. And Lord, your teachings and your words, Lord, are a great comfort to us. Lord, I thank you for, that we've had an example of leadership in our country. And Lord, I pray that we will continue to have that same example in our leadership. Lord, I do pray for Charles and his family and, his, and those people, Lord, who have that responsibility. Lord, your word says that we should pray for those in authority. So we pray for them, for our government. Lord, we pray that those people, Lord, even in the midst of the so many different things that are happening right now, and it seems like that they go in the wrong direction so often in our thinking and understanding. Lord, I pray this morning that even though we can't put words to it, Lord, but you can do things in those realms, Lord, that are above and beyond the way that we think. And so, Lord, we pray that in our government, Lord, in our leaders that you will bless them, that you will guide them. Lord, that they will lead this country in a country of righteousness. Lord, that they will uphold your truth. Lord, that, that your word, Lord, will be the foundation upon which it is built. Lord, and the things that are said, Lord, will reflect who you are and who you are in our lives and in our country. <clears throat> Lord, this, this, this country has been a beacon of light around the world in years gone by. And Lord, sometimes we wonder if that light's not as strong as it should be. So, Lord, I pray that, Lord, that light could shine again, Lord, and be strong and a beacon around the world for who you are and what you can do in people's lives, I pray and ask in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I pray for the church. Lord, I pray for our church here this morning. Lord, I pray that each one of us, Lord, Lord, will be strengthened by you. Lord, that your spirit, Lord, will be refreshing us day by day. Lord, that your word says that we can be renewed inside in our inner man on a daily basis. Renew us every day. Even though we're getting old on the outward body, Lord, I pray that we'll be renewed on a daily basis before you so that we can continue to do the work that you've called us, that we can reflect your glory, that we can shine like a light in the darkness that we're surrounded by. Lord, 
God, we have an important message to deliver. And the message is this, that Jesus came into this world to save people from their sin so that they may not face hell and eternal damnation, but that they can be saved and enter into heaven and enter into that glorious and wonderful reward that you've got prepared for those who will show their faith in you. So Lord, I pray for our church, the church nation wide, Lord, that it will be strong in you, that your spirit will be poured out. I pray and ask in your name. Amen. 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 And just before I finish, thank you. Just before I finish, let me just explain what happened a bit earlier in our service. And it might be something that you're unfamiliar with and you know, you heard somebody speak in a rather strange language. One of the things that we believe is that God speaks to his church through the gift of tongues, which is explained in the Bible, and that happens, and, and those, those gifts are used to, to bring something of what God would want to say into our church. And so what happened here this morning is that, is that he was never spoke, actually. He, he, he spoke out in tongues, in faith, because you've got to do it in faith, and then, and then you wait, and you, and you, and you, and, and, that, and it was me who, who said it. And so I wait and ponder and say, Lord, what do you want to say to us? Uh, you've got something to say to us. Let us have an ear that hears what you say. And so, what God wanted to say to us this morning is, is basically that those, those things that he, He's, He's there. He's with us. He's with us every step of the way. Don't worry about, about. Uh, you know, you know, you know the things that, that that you face. You know, but because he will be with you. So that's what was happening earlier in our service, and uh, I just pray that you're blessed by what was said. Amen. Thanks, Bob. That was good. Praise God for his faithfulness to us, and we just trust him for his faithfulness in all the things that we do in church. Mm. Just like to especially remember Jill and Ollie, they've got busy time, I think, with, with what's happened with the Queen, and they've been dashing about, and that's why they're not here this morning, partly. So we just pray for a you know, blessing on them. Right, we've got a quiet week this week, however, which is good, so we've got Coffee morning and prayer at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. Please come if you're free and join us. Then I think Wednesday night we have fellowship and Bible study evening at 7.30. So again, if you're free to come, it's just really informal and a great time to have fellowship together and and to dig a bit deeper into God's word. And then there's bellies not bins as usual on Thursday. I think that's all this week. Uh, A couple of other things. Um... Message from Angela. Can we start getting prepared for the shoeboxes? Does Joy want to come and say something like that? Um, it's shoebox time, and uh, I've had a message from Angela. She's not sure this year whether everybody wanted to do shoeboxes as it's another expense. But we've got some boxes, but she's also going to put a box out for donations. So if you can't afford to do a box, if you could just put a couple of pounds in a box, then we will make the boxes up ourselves later. So there will be some boxes if you want them, but otherwise we'll just have a box ready. Just to put a little bit of money in, a pound or two, whatever you can afford, and then we'll make some boxes up. Thank you. And the other thing was just on um, Ollie's behalf. He's doing an event to raise money for the mayor's charities, which is to give out um, takeaway afternoon teas that they'll be packing up and giving out from here at the end of the month. So if anybody would like to book one, if they could contact Jill this week, that would be great. Okay? I think that's all. Back to the worship team. sing one last song together before we finish so would you like to stand and join us please
Good. 